Hello everyone, this is Jack. In this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know on how to make hot compost. I'm going to cover all the steps from start to finish to make hot compost and the science behind it. So let's get started. For composting, you need four basic things, carbon, nitrogen, water, and air. Grass clippings are rich in nitrogen and provide the green material for the compost pile, while dead leaves are rich in carbon and provide the brown material needed to make the hot compost pile. Grass clippings are perfect to use when making compost pile along with dead brown leaves because they do not attract any pests and decompose quickly. Layer the green and brown material like a lasagna to make the hard compost pile. Composting is the process to speed up the natural decay of organic material by creating ideal condition of carbon to nitrogen ratio for organisms to thrive and decompose the material. The correct carbon to nitrogen ratio is the key to composting. 30 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio is ideal because organisms that feed on the organic material consume 30 part carbon to every 1 part nitrogen. Too much carbon will slow down the decomposing process and too much nitrogen will create a foul smell in the compost pile. Here's carbon to nitrogen ratio of some materials. Anything below 30 to 1 ratio is considered green and anything above 30 to 1 ratio is considered brown. Some of green materials include grass clippings, which is 17 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio, while coffee grounds and manure is 20 to 1, and vegetable scraps is 25 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio. Some of the brown materials include dead leaves, which is 60 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio, straw and hay is 90 to 1, paper and cardboard is 175 to 1, and sawdust is 500 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio. Two parts green to one part brown is a general rule for creating a compost pile. To further understand the ratios, let's take grass clippings and dead leaves as an example. Take two parts of grass clippings, whether it's two buckets or any measurement, to one part dead leaves. This means we have two of the 17 to 1 carbon to nitrogen content and one of the 60 to 1 carbon to nitrogen content. After adding these up, we have 94 to 3 carbon to nitrogen content. Now let's divide 94 by 3, which results in 31.33 to 1 carbon to nitrogen content, which is right where we want to be. However, adding just a little bit of sawdust will greatly increase carbon content because of 500 to 1 ratio of carbon in the sawdust. So use sawdust very sparingly. I use just a little bit of sawdust just to be on the safe side not to have a smelly compost. Never compost dairy and meat. These products will create a very bad smell and attract rodents and flies. I also add coffee grounds to my compost pile since coffee grounds are very fine and decompose quickly. Coffee grounds can however create a compact compost pile, so I add toilet paper rolls to provide aeration to the compost pile. Toilet paper rolls help to provide aeration and also make the compost pile lighter. Completely mix and pile all the material. Make sure the pile is at least 3 feet wide and 3 feet tall to be effective. Water the pile completely when done. Water heavily so that the water starts to come out of the sides of the compost pile. After one week, the pile starts to heat up and all the organic material starts to decompose quickly. Keep the pile moist by watering the pile every two to three days and aerate the pile by turning the pile every three to five days. Turning the compost pile provides aeration to the compost pile and help to break up the material. When turning, move the outer material on top of the compost pile into the middle of the new pile. After two weeks, the compost pile will start to heat up further. I've had this compost pile for about two weeks now and I'll be adding more coffee grounds to this compost pile. I'm adding coffee grounds because everything in this compost pile is turning brown, even the grass is turning brown. So there's a lot more carbon in this compost pile. I want to add more nitrogen so it heats up even further. You don't want to add any big material to this compost pile at this point. You want to add very fine material and coffee grounds are just perfect. The temperature of compost pile should reach around 130 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 54 to 60 degrees Celsius. I have a thermometer here to check the temperature of the compost pile. I'm inserting the thermometer into the pile and the temperature starts to rise. The temperature rises quickly because of the heat in the compost pile. The temperature of my pile hits around 128 degrees Fahrenheit or 53 degrees Celsius, which is acceptable. My pile is not heating up to 130 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit because my compost is a little bit heavier on the carbon side. I like it this way so that there is no foul smell in my compost pile. After one month, the compost decomposes further. It is still heating up, but not as much as before. The maximum temperature my pile is now reaching is around 123 degrees Fahrenheit. After two months, the compost is almost ready and does not need to be turned any further. 
After two and a half months, the compost cools down and the worms move into the compost pile and further decompose the organic material by making worm castings in the process. After three months, the compost is fully decomposed and turns into rich black decomposed material. This compost makes great addition to raised beds and does wonders when growing vegetables. If you ever had a failure in gardening while growing any kind of vegetable, make or buy compost and add it generously to your garden and you will definitely see good results. So this is it. This is how you make hot compost and I hope you can turn your grass clippings and dead leaves into this rich organic compost. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in another video.